Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to do a review of our Montana 3120 RL. We have a 2020 model that we purchased back in September of 2019. Uh, so we're about a little late for our one year review. We're 15 months owning this. Our particular rig was built in August of 2019, so it does have the model year changes. So it'll be a little different. If you have a, one of the earlier 2020 models, you're going to see some of the, the differences between ours and the model year changes. Um, that's one of the reasons that we chose this one when we did was because of the changes. Um, they seem to just fit our likes a little bit better than the earlier um, 2020 model years. So we are going to kind of just give you a tour and go over the things that uh, maybe we've had some issues with things that we've had to um, fix. Um, likes, dislikes, modifications. Yeah, we have made a few thing. modifications um, to this rig to fit our needs as well as I'm sure most of you have. And we'll go over those with you and things that we've added. Um, we'll leave links in the description below so that if it's something that you're interested in maybe doing to your rig, um, you'll have the information there. I guess we'll just get right into this and Start here in the inside, and then we'll go around the outside, and we'll show you some of those things and, and some of the issues that we've had maybe in both inside and outside. So let's get into this. So we'll start at the back of the rig, uh, back in the living area. Um, I mean, obviously, this is going to be, if you have a 3120 or 3121, um, this is going to be pretty much all identical. Um, so we'll just talk about some things that maybe we've had some issues with. So as far as the theater seating, they are the power seats that probably everyone has. We've not had any issues with that so far. It is kind of nice to get up in the morning and turn the seat warmers on, though, so I kind of appreciate that. Oh, especially when it's a little chilly. <laughs> Absolutely. So um, the only issues we've had back here in the living area is, um, I will say this, um, we haven't actually had any issues with the television other than the quality of that TV is not the greatest. So um, if that's something that maybe somebody from Keystone might be watching this video, that's something that maybe they might want to consider. The Jensen TVs really, if you don't use the sound through the stereo system, it's terrible. So we always run the sound through the stereo system. And that brings me to the second thing, the stereo system. We've had all kinds of issues with <clears throat> our DVD player. It just kind of has a mind of its own. Some days it'll work just fine. Other days it won't. Um, at the beginning when we first got the rig, I couldn't get it to work at all. Um, and then I actually pulled it out and found out that the way they had the HDMI cable installed, it was so loose that that was causing the issue. So I was able to find a workaround for that and get that strapped in a little bit tighter. And that seemed to help quite a bit. Um, but still, it still has a mind of its own. Uh, sometimes the day video works, sometimes it won't. But fortunately, we don't watch it that much, so it's not that huge of an issue for us. Fireplace, so far we've had absolutely no issues with. That's been great. So I don't know, there's not much more to talk about back here in the living room. Um, moving on to the kitchen, then. Um, we've had absolutely no issues with the stove or the oven. I've read on some of the Montana owner groups where some people have had some issues with their oven. Fortunately, we've not had any issues as of yet. Um, the only thing that we've had back here um, is we've had some of the molding up here. The, the crown molding has come loose and I've had to um, reattach that. And I think I used a little bit longer staples than what Keystone did. Um, again, that didn't upset me too much because I realize these are rolling earthquakes. We go down the road quite a bit. I know others, maybe this is a destination rig for you and maybe you don't have issues like that. That's one thing that I hope that Keystone would consider as some of us actually go down the road quite a bit in these. Ours is 15 months old and we're about 8,000 miles um, as far as towing this thing so far. So that was one issue. That's a keystone issue in my book. Um, they could do a little bit better job with maybe longer staples or gluing them or something like that. Um, the wine rack, I think, um, is an issue because <clears throat> even sitting 
parked, I don't feel like wine bottles are safe to be tipped down so the wine's towards the cork like they're supposed to be. So we need to make some modifications to that yet. Yeah, when we go back home in the uh, spring, that's one of my projects is to take that apart. I know a lot of people have taken the wine rack out and maybe installed some cupboard doors and used them for other purposes. Everybody has their own um, ideas of what um, they want and what they don't want. We do drink wine, so we use the wine rack. The only problem is we can't store the bottles in there properly because they'll slide right out just by somebody walking down through that aisleway between the stove and the sink. So we're storing them that way for now and we'll fix that later. So that's a Keystone issue. That's a poor design on Keystone's part. Um, so we'll walk around here and see. One of the issues that I've had with the sink is that when you try to pull this thing down, it gets stuck. And that I think is just where the, uh, the weight thing underneath of the cabinet is kind of sandwiched in between the the water lines there and it doesn't allow it to go up and down so that is something that we need to rectify yeah and today the weather is not going to be the best here in florida so we're going to make it a work day so i've got several projects that's one of the things on the list it's just a matter of disconnecting that water line and moving it into the front of the other water lines and i think it'll flow pretty smoothly so we'll move up here to the front. Um, the refrigerator. Obviously we have a 3120, which means we have an RV refrigerator. This has been the biggest issue we've had with this rig so far. Um, when we first purchased it, we hadn't used it much yet until we got down here to Florida. And we had a Cougar fifth wheel before that. And on average, for a three month period, we were using like $60 um, in electricity in the park that we were at. Our first year um, with the Montana down here, we got an electric bill of $274. Our first thought was maybe we had a bad meter. Um, we got home, we plugged the rig in, and our first month, the light bill went up $100. So we knew we had a problem. The best that we could do was 40 degrees in the refrigerator, regardless of what setting we had it on. We contacted Norcold. Again, this is not a Keystone issue. This is a Norcold issue. Um, they sent somebody out, or we called a mobile RV place because we were having such difficulty just getting it scheduled into a dealership for them to look at. It was going to be three or four months for us to drop it off, and then they would get to it when they got to it, which just wasn't acceptable for us because we like to use our RV. So a mobile place came out and they replaced one of the heating elements in the electric side of it and said one was bad so the other one was working twice as hard and that was causing the problem. Well, that wasn't the problem. So to make a long story short, we ended up having the whole cooling unit replaced and so far it's been okay. Um, we are learning though that in cold weather, these don't really function that well. Um, if the refrigerator doesn't run enough in cold weather, um, it's kind of hard to keep the temperatures that you want. So they're kind of temperamental um, if you're trying to use these in cold weather. So um, one thing that I do want to mention, when we were having the trouble with the refrigerator, we contacted a company in Shipshawana, Indiana. I believe the name is JC Refrigeration. And we found out that they can convert these refrigerators to um, either over to a compressor style electric like a residential refrigerator. They will also convert it to a uh, 12 volt compressor style um, so that it just runs off of 12 volt. And they can also build you a cooling unit that runs off gas and electric. The thing after talking to them we learned with this particular Norcold refrigerator was that Norcold did not put a big enough cooling unit in these. And they assured us that if we did have them put a cooling unit in, um, not only would it run more efficient, but we could actually freeze ice cream so that it gets hard. Right now, this refrigerator or this freezer is not capable of freezing ice cream to where it's hard. It's, it's 
just a little bit stiffer than soft serve ice cream. Soft serve ice cream is the best you can do. So if we have any more trouble with this in the future, um, I believe we're just going to take it right to JC Refrigeration in Shipshawana, Indiana, and we're going to have a bigger cooling unit put in. So uh, enough about that. If anybody else has had any experiences with these, um, please leave comments below and let us know. Uh, maybe there's just something we're doing wrong, but um, that's been our experience with that so far. So we will move forward. Um, some of the modifications I'll talk about, as you can see, with the refrigerator problems that we had, we added um, a digital thermometer in the freezer and the refrigerator so that we can monitor the temperatures in there all the time. And we, mount, we just mounted this. This has magnets on it. You can mount it to the front of the refrigerator if you'd like. Um, I didn't feel like they were strong enough to hold going down the road and I was afraid to scratch up the refrigerator. So we just used command strips and put it next to here. And it's, we can see it pretty easily as you can see. On the right, the refrigerator is running 35 degrees. And on the left right now, the freezer is at 17 degrees. Your typical residential refrigerator or freezer will run at zero degrees. So there's the difference there between residential and RV refrigerators. So also while I'm here pointing at the thermostat, I've noticed a lot of comments on Facebook pages about people asking, how do you turn on the heat pump in the front? And there is no heat pump in the front air conditioner, folks. It's just the rear air conditioner, and that's the only place you can control heat from is this thermostat, whether it's the furnace or the heat pump. The only thing the thermostat up in the bedroom is going to control is the air conditioner itself, the second air conditioner. So, um, so we're going to move forward. Is there any other issues we might have had down here that... Not that I can think of. Um, so... So we'll move up to the bathroom and I'm going to have Tina hold the camera because I'm going to show you guys one issue that we've had in the bathroom so far is, and I'm going to show you guys and hopefully she can follow me in there. Guys, run your finger along the top of your shower if you've got a one piece shower. For whatever reason, I did that and I found there's a quarter inch gap up there that Keystone never sealed. And I realized that the shower head is pointing down. And if you're a tall person, water is still going to find its way back there. So check your showers, guys. Um, I don't know if it was every year, but ours is, like I said, a 2020. And we found this issue. I did email Keystone and let them know that that was a problem. Um, I didn't expect them to do anything about it because I can run a beta caulk there just as well as anybody else. Um, whoever responded to my email pretty much said, okay, but that's not something that we do in the manufacturing process. I didn't really want them to do anything about it. I just wanted them to know it was a problem and maybe they should look at it. In the other incidences where we've had to contact Keystone, they've been great. That one particular email, I just kind of felt like whoever responded to that email kind of blew it off. So if somebody from Keystone's watching this, that's something you might want to consider. There's two other modifications that we're going to make here in the bathroom today during workday. Number one is a new toilet seat because of the cheap plastic toilet seat that comes with that. Um, Tina's not happy with that, so we're going to change it. So the other thing is this faucet that Keystone put in. You probably can't see it on the camera. Um, but it's kind of starting to peel. The finish of it is kind of starting to peel. So we're going to replace that today with a better quality faucet. And um, so other than that, I don't think there's been anything um, that's been an issue with us in the bathroom. It's no. been pretty, other than um, the automatic light that's in, you got it, that is in the door when you open up. This light just never shut off. So we were able to order a new one and replace it and it's been fine. We get that through trekwood.com. And here's something interesting about trekwood.com. When they ran our credit card, we realized that it was actually that Tierra RV in Elkhart, Indiana. So if you have any issues getting parts um, and you don't get any response trying through trekwood.com, call Tierra and talk to them because I have a feeling that they're all one and the same. 
So let's move up to the bedroom. Okay, so here in the bedroom, we haven't changed a lot. We did change out the TV because we added a 32 inch TV to our Cougar and it was pretty much a new TV. And as I said before, the Jensen TVs, in my opinion, are just not good quality TVs. Um, so we switched it out to a Samsung. It wasn't that the TV went bad, it's just we weren't happy with it. Uh, so one thing that we did add, um, we haven't done the full blown um, Splendid washer and dryer yet because we weren't sure if we wanted a washer and dryer. So we actually just put in a little manual one for now just to see if we would use it. Um, we do use it down here in Florida. So I think that's going to be one of our next major modifications or upgrades is to put in a stackable washer and dryer. And we're going to do the stackable because uh, reviews that we've read, they just seem to be more, a little more efficient. So that's our one of our next major um, upgrades is the washer and dryer. The closet. I'm sure everybody else, unless it's a, you have an older 3120 or 3121, um, it's all straightforward. One thing that we have heard or read, people complaining about the, the rod, the clothes hanger rod, coming loose in the center. So when we travel, we take pool noodles and we just stick them in here and then we just keep the clothes to each side of the closet to kind of take away any stress on that. If we do notice that starting to come loose, I might add a pole or something in there. But for now, the pool noodle is working just fine. We do kind of have issues with the sliding doors. They're kind of tight. And then when we got down here this year to Florida, we found out that some of the rails up here are coming loose. They were some strip screws. So that's on my list of things to do today to get, get fixed. I'm probably going to have to drill a hole and move some screws over and find something a little bit beefier to run a screw into. I'm not sure if they just stripped the screw or if it just worked its way loose because, you know, travel and all the vibration. So is there anything else up here in the bedroom that... Well, one thing new for the, the 2020 model is that they added that window above the bed. Oh, yeah. We forgot to start talking about some of the changes they made in the model year changes. They added this window. So if you have an early model um, 2020, you don't have that window. That was one of the changes. And um, most of the time we keep that closed, but we do open it sometimes during the day just for some light in here. Um, and it's nice to have the little um, nightstands. They're big enough for um, cell phones and you can see you can even get a little fan back there if you'd like. So it's nice to have the outlets next to each side of the bed. So on the inside, that's pretty much um, a few issues that we've had, nothing too major. Um, if we, I'll have Tina turn around and point down here. One thing that I did add, because with um, the new key TV system that Montana put in, you no longer have a 12 volt cigarette plug um, behind your TV where it controls the antenna. Sometimes we will stop when we're traveling at a harvest host and we might have a neighbor close by and we don't necessarily want to run the generator. So I ended up, it was the easiest way to do it. I took the dresser out and I took the, um, the boxes that they cover. This, this carpeted box actually covers the frame. Um, so I pulled those off and it was easy to run a wire, 12 volt wire right down to the battery. So I put in a, uh, a 12 volt plug so that we can plug in an inverter. I have a little 500 watt inverter and plug in the TV and we can watch TV at night if we stop or if on a travel day and we don't necessarily have to run the generator if we have somebody at a harvest host next to us and we don't want to disturb them. So that's one thing we really try to be considerate when we're traveling, when we um, park in places overnight um, in rest stops and things like that. Um, when we get outside, I'll show you our generator. It runs pretty quiet, but Again, if we're right next to somebody at a harvest host, we really don't want to disturb them. So that's one little modification I made. Um, that was one thing I was disappointed in. I know that Keystone is always coming up with um, newer and better ways to do things. Um, so far, we have not had any issues whatsoever with the, the key TV, as they call it. Our digital antennas, for instance, we're pulling like 60 some channels um, here off of that digital antenna here in the Tampa Bay area and they're all crystal clear. So um, they're doing something right. So let's go back um, and we'll just show you a couple of the um, upgraded um, late model year changes that they made. If you have an early 
2020 Montana, you have the pivot door in the bathroom. And those of you that have it have probably already picked up on the fact that they changed that to the sliding door. And I will say kudos to Keystone for that because that was another one of the deciding factors for us for this rig was that sliding door. Um, so, and then I may miss some of the um, upgrades that they did, but another one that they did in the late model year was they put the window behind the stove for extra light. Sometimes we do open that up and they did change all of the the faces and frames of the cabinets to solid wood instead of the, the press board that they used to be. So. Wasn't the air conditioning placement of the return things a change too? I think that is one of the changes. They moved the return airs in closer to make the system a little more efficient. Um, I did see in a video, I think Dust and Wag, they were having some issues with their 2019 where it was leaking. And when he was doing that video, I noticed that theirs were further apart. And if you're interested in what problems they had, the Wayward Wags, he's got a whole video on that and the problems they had. So if you have a 2019 and you're having issues with your air conditioner either leaking on the floor or inefficiencies, you might want to check out his video because they had some workarounds that they did um, that they can share with. So other than that, I think interior-wise, that's pretty much the only change I heard. Those are the big changes. We did have a request from somebody. I, I put out on the 3120 Montana Owners Group that we were going to do this video. And if anybody wanted anything answered or they wanted to see something particular, we only had two things. One person asked, what does the um, Wi-Fi, the Furion Wi-Fi thing on the wall actually do? The answer is simple. It does nothing unless you buy their router and subscribe to their service. So basically, it's it's kind of like the Furion mounts that you get on the back for the uh, backup camera. It's there for you to purchase the additional equipment. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it because we have hotspots. We didn't really plan on using it. We've been told the service is mediocre at best and pricey, so we really haven't done so if I'm talking out of school about that, I apologize. I don't know much about it other than what it comes with is basically just where you mount the router to. So um, I think that's it for the inside. Um, we really haven't had a whole lot of issues other than some little issues here and there. Again, we've had some things come loose and we found some stray screws and things like that on the floor from time to time. Um, and then we have to go hunt that down and figure out where the heck that came from. Again, that comes with the fact that these are just rolling earthquakes. They shake, they bounce going down the road. And if you travel a lot like we do, that's, I guess, to be expected from any manufacturer. Um, so. And I think, too, that they, you know, could just been left behind during manufacturing. I mean. Yeah, during, you know, around. if any of you have been to the factory, you know that those folks move fast. And these things go down the line pretty quick. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not doing it right. Um, they have their own methods of doing things so that they can do them in an efficient manner. So again, that could be that they just were left behind and now they're bouncing their way out of a crack and crevice somewhere. Um, we're 15 months old now and we are still sweeping up sawdust out of the pantry after almost every trip. I don't know when the sawdust is going to quit falling, but it hasn't yet after 15 months. And like I said, we've traveled over 8,000 miles with this and it's still going. So, okay, I guess we're going to move outside and we'll just go around that real quick. And I'll, I have had a few issues out there and I'll show you some modifications and talk about some modifications we made there. And again, guys, at any time, if you've got comments of things that you've had issues with, or if you've had issues with some of the things we have, and maybe some of the fixes that you've done, we'd appreciate hearing it. So let's move outside and, and take a look out there. Okay, so we'll just walk around the outside and we'll go over a few things, our dislikes and likes, and maybe some things that we've had to change or maybe some things that we've had some problems with. Number one, and I'm sure this is probably the same complaint that every other person who's purchased a 2020 Montana has, when they switched this door handle, I've kind of gotten down to where I can get it open pretty easily. Tina still struggles with it a little bit. 
The biggest complaint that I've heard from most people is you can't order one of those keypad locks for that. And I've read where a couple of people have actually contacted the key lock um, company to see if they were going to manufacture one that they can open with a code and their answer was no because uh, Keystone is going to discontinue even using that particular lock. And I see in the 2021s um, they've moved back to the other style. So obviously that's one good thing about Keystone. If something doesn't go well or customers don't like it, they'll make the change. So I have to give them props for that. I'm assuming we're stuck with this particular door handle because otherwise we'd have to probably change the whole door. So I guess we're just going to have to live with it. We would really like to change over to the keypad lock, but unfortunately we're not going to be able to do that. Um, that's our biggest complaint out here with that. Um, I do have a couple of concerns with the awning. When I roll the awnings in, it seems like on the front, um, that does not seat well into the channel that's mounted to the, and I have to push that over sometimes. So if you've had a problem with that yourself, please let me know and let me know if there is a way that you fixed it. So another thing is that we had an issue with was the steps. And I'm going to open up the door and show you because I'm going to have to do that. So the one issue that we had right away was um, they weren't going folding in all the way or staying folded in um, as tight as they should be. Um, and it was banging on the screen door, marring that all up. And sometimes it was just hard to get the door to close and latch because this was these steps weren't folded in far enough. So, again, we were reading how some people say, oh, your hinge is probably bent. Um, some of these steps got out of the factory with the wrong hinges and things like that. Well, I can tell you with this COVID thing, getting this thing in to get serviced was an absolute nightmare. Nobody had time for it unless it was in the winter. Of course, we're going to be down here in Florida in the winter. So the easy fix for me was I called more ride after I um, some friends of ours bought a new fifth wheel that's not a Montana and it had this latch on it. So I called more ride and the easiest thing to do is you just pull it in and then it holds it in there tight. Um, it was like a $20 part. So it really wasn't worth the hassle for me to take this rig an hour and a half away to a dealership for them just to check and see if the hinge was bent. Um, more ride knew right away what I was talking about. And like I said, it was 20 some dollars and they had it shipped to me in two or three days. And it's just a matter of taking that stopper off and replacing it with this latch. So if you're having the same issue, uh, you might want to consider just calling more ride and tell them, um, you want the latch for that and they'll send it right out to you. So that was an easy fix for us and it no longer catches on the door and we never fight to get the door closed anymore because these aren't sit uh, back far enough. So let's move up front and I'll show you what we've done up there. Okay, I'm going to open this up. And this is where we, we keep our generator. As you can see, it's just a champion, a champion 3100 watt inverted generator. For this, we had all the storage up front where they normally would um, put a generator and we were just able to modify the exhaust on it so that we could put an exhaust going outside. So it also has a remote start um, and how I wired it was we did install a transfer switch from Furion and if you're interested in doing that, I'll put a link down below. Um, to that particular transfer switch that we purchased. It was real easy to install, um, really good instructions. How I wired mine though was because um, one of our um, next upgrades is also gonna be a solar system and we're probably gonna go with a 3000 watt inverter, which will probably maybe just carry this in the truck for a backup if we have to, but we'll use the inverter in the future. So how I wired it for now was just on the 30 amp plug because this inverter or this, excuse me, generator has the 30 amp RV plug. I can wire an inverter in here so that all I have to do is plug in and it'll go through the transfer switch. Um, unless we decide 
how extensive we're going to go with the solar system, we may just take it to Indiana and let them install the whole system with the Battleborn batteries. So that's um, one of our future upgrades is to go with lithium batteries and a 3000 watt inverter. So um, I also changed and added, you can't see it with the bikes. Maybe I can get it open with the bikes here. Um, if we can, if she can come in. I did change to two batteries and put a double battery box in and I was able to find that at Camping World um, so that if you, I don't know if you can get in there and see that, the, um, the cable connectors are right on the outside of the box so I can disconnect them in a hurry if I have to. Um, we also did change the, the, the circuit breaker in there to an 80 amp and I did that right away. Um, I noticed in colder weather we were having trouble with the 50 amp one kicking out when we were using the leveling system so I switched that out to the 80 amp and I know there's a lot of talk about that on the internet and people are doing that so um, let's move around to the other side. Okay, I did have another request on the Montana owners um, to show you guys how you can open up just one slide at a time. Um, it's pretty simple. You have two valves. So I forget the lady's name that asked me to do this, but here, so here you go. You open this up and they're marked. The DS stands for door side. ODS stands for off door side. So <clears throat> if you want to open up just one or the other, you leave that one on. And if you want the other one not to, you just basically turn it off by turning this valve to the off position and then it's only going to operate the one you leave in the on position. So if you're in a rest stop somewhere and you don't want to open up the off door side, you just come out and I do that quite frequently, you just turn it off um, and it's only going to op operate the side that's still turned on. So very simple. I'm not going to go over the operation of the leveling system because you all probably know how to work that just fine. Um, another upgrade that we did make is we put a surge guard, surge protector, a built one, built in one on the rig so that we don't have to worry about one hanging off of the power pole, somebody walking away with it because I've heard horror stories where that kind of thing has happened. Um, and I'll put a link below for that where you can purchase that. Again, that's another easy install. If you're not comfortable with that, I'm sure you can find an electrician to do that or take it to a dealer and they can install that for you. But I highly recommend a surge protector. Um, we did find out that once that was installed, we have a power pole at home that's dedicated, a 30 amp power pole, where we park our RV just to keep the refrigerator running and the, the batteries charged and things like that. We had a loose ground in there that we didn't know about, but the surge protector detected it and it wouldn't let the power through. So we had to fix that, something that we didn't know we had a problem with once the surge protector was in. So highly recommend if you don't have a surge protector for your rig, if you're gonna spend this kind of money on a rig, you're gonna to wanna to protect it. So get a surge protector. The other thing that I changed was I put this 90 degree um, adapter on because the, the jacket for the power cord was pulling loose because of all the tension. So we switched that over. Um, and again, I can put the links down below if you want something like this. Um, and I just switched out and put a female on the actual cord. So I just plugged those two in after I put that on and life is good. As far as the furnace and the hot water tank, we've had absolutely no issues whatsoever. So um, we're pretty happy with that so far. Um, another one of the changes that they did made was make in the late model year was this location for the power, which I like it up here much better. Um, it used to be on the back of the rig. So if you've got a 19 or an early model year 2020, yours is going to be on the back. <clears throat> I really like it up here. It just seems like it's, it's closer to the power pedestals when you come into a park. Another add-on that I made, guys, was this More Ride cord reel. They are a little pricey for what they are, but as heavy as these 50 amp cords are, this thing is well worth every penny that I paid for it. And I'll put a link down, of course, for you guys to see that. This is nothing more than um, 
actually an air hose reel that I had laying around that I just screwed to the top of that for my water hoses. And for my water hoses, I just use the G-Force hoses that flatten up. So we carry a 75 foot and a 25 foot and I just reel the 25 foot up last. So that's the first thing that comes off because that's the most common length of hose that I use. And then I have an extra 75 foot um, there just in case I need it. So that's just a couple other small upgrades that don't cost a lot of money that, that makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so another good thing that Keystone did do was they put good tires on these Montanas. These come with Saloon tires. Um, I can't say enough about them. We've had good luck with them so far. Um, they're not showing much wear even after 8,000 miles um, on the road. Um, and that's one thing that I always tell everybody that buys a new RV. Check the tires on those things. And if they have cheap Chinese tires like the Trail Kings or something like that, Get those off as soon as you can and get some quality tires on because there is nothing worse than losing a tire with one of them China bombs. And, and Tina certainly found out why they call them China bombs. We had one blow on our Cougar and it does sound like a bomb going off. So um, one good thing Cougar, or, uh, excuse me, Montana did was put the good tires on. And while we're talking about tires, that's another upgrade I made to this. I put a tire pressure monitoring system on the RV. Um, I, it's through TST Truck. I'll put a link, of course, in the bottom for you. And we bought ours through TechnoRV.com and that's another good place to get stuff like that. TechnoRV is, um, they are RV people and they really specialize in service and, and helping you with whatever products that you buy, making sure that you understand those products. So we'll move around to the back. <clears throat> There really isn't anything back here. Um, it does. Uh, this one does have the 3,000 pound hitch on the back. Um, it is rated to tow 3,000 pounds. This guy's not towing anything behind his fifth wheel. I know some guys will do it. More power to you guys. I'm not doing it. That's just one more thing that I have to worry about going down the road and that's just one worry I don't want. As you can see, we use it for our bike rack. We have electric bikes that both weigh about 52 pounds a piece and this Thule um, bike rack does a wonderful job with them. We've not had any issues with the bikes coming loose or anything like that um, bouncing down the road back here. So um, if you're hauling bikes, that bike that hitch is a good thing for a bike rack for sure and Thule makes a really good bike rack for that. So one more upgrade I want to mention that we did make was we did change out the water pump. Uh, we were not happy with how noisy the stock pump was that came with the rig um, so we changed over to it's a four piston pump and I'll put the link below um, to show you guys what we used and we also put what they call a silencing kit on it which is nothing more than two soft hoses to go on each side to reduce the vibration and that vibration coming off the pump onto those PEX lines is what really causes that noise um, so since we switched over to that and I also put an accumulator tank on there um, even in the kitchen, we can't even hear that pump run. You really have to be in the bathroom and listen for it to hear it run. So if that's one thing that drives you crazy is that loud pump, um, it's inexpensive really to change and it's really simple to change. So that's one more upgrade that we did make. So um, that kind of wraps up our review today of things that we've changed, things that we don't like. All in all, um, this has been a great rig for us and um, we really are planning on keeping it around uh, for quite some time. One recommendation that I do have to make is make sure you check up on your roof um, frequently and, and make sure that those seams don't have any gaps or pinholes in the caulk. I mean, we have found a couple and got them sealed up right away and we've not had any leaks yet. Um, another area is right here on the rails for the Swintech system. Again, um, those of you that are on the Montana 3120 owners, you saw Dustin's um, video of they had a leak and it was caused by this not being sealed. And I don't have any silicone up here either. We haven't had any leaks yet, but that's going to get sealed up probably this week. So just remember you check on those things from time to time, guys. And uh, other than that, um, that's it. Okay, so that's a review of our Montana 3120. Um, I know that those of you that probably were watching this 
are going, well, I had this problem or I had that problem. I know we all are going to have our own unique little problems. Um, if you watch other people's videos, they're having their own problems as well. And it doesn't matter if they have a Keystone product or a Forest River product. Anybody who's on the road on a regular basis, like I said, these are rolling earthquakes. You're going to have some problems from time to time. So um, I appreciate you guys watching. By the way, I got all of the projects done um, on Workday. Um, the faucet in the kitchen's working perfect now. We got a new faucet. I'll put some pictures up here in the corner for you um, in the bathroom. And I'll post a couple pictures while I had it apart. Um, we got a little surprise when we took it apart. We thought there was three holes in the counter when there was only two. So I had to put another hole in for the faucet that we chose. So if you're watching this because you are thinking about buying a Montana, don't let any of the things that you saw in this video discourage you. These are good rigs. Montana makes a good product. Montana stands behind their product. We've had... Um, issues where we've called Montana and they've been wonderful. Um, if you get an opportunity, if you are shopping for Montana and you are in the Midwest somewhere, make a trip to Goshen, Indiana and tour the factory. I think you'll appreciate that. You'll see how they're put together. Um, so thanks for watching guys and we'll see you on the next video. you want to leave this place where we grew up this old town just leave it all behind you're just gonna cry when you're gone